but is one or reckless in such a belief when the defendant is wanton, reckless, and bringing about a situation required to conduct described in subsection 1, the justification afforded by the section is unavailable in the prosecution for any offense for which wantonness or recklessness, as the case may be, suffices to establish culpability. Whatever. Um, it's interesting actually here with uh, child abusers and wife abusers, you're allowed to bring evidence into that about their prior acts of domestic violence. So when you use physical force and self-protection, I had been confronted with a child abuser and he had pushed into me and I pushed back into him. No big fucking deal. But then the child abuser brings up a fucking golf club, swings it at me with deadly force, tries to murder me, right? Try, the fear of imminent danger was very clear and I would have been justified in taking that child abuser out. I would have been justified. And, um, and I know it. Like he's the one pushed into me. He's the one that had uh, 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 started it. And you know he had prior acts of domestic violence, like over five thousand prior acts of domestic violence, of which the entire you know fucking child beating clan, you know the Ku Klux plantation fucking clan of slave driving fucking oppressor molesters, they all ignore, even though they were you know front row seats and witnesses of all the fucking bullshit that went down. Loves their fucking massa. Stockholm Syndrome loves their fucking massa. And they got to be a fucking dick just like him, right? That's how you, he showed you how to be. Would you rather be a pushover or would you rather be a fucking man, right? So, um, improper use of physical force and self-protection, protection of another, it kind of goes down. This is, um, this is the justification, is or justified. You can say if you're justified or not in... KRS chapter 503. So there's other vigilante things. I mean, I had a person break into my house and take my stuff, and I felt as though I could have, you know, really harmed that person, but I, I couldn't bring myself to murder somebody, okay? So if it, you know, you could take a fork and jab it in someone's eye or some shit, but I feel like if they weren't coming towards me, if they weren't coming towards me looking to give me physical danger, and I wasn't sure if they're, you know what I mean? Like, if there had to be like, I'm going, coming for you. If they're coming for my shit, that's a little bit different than coming to injure me it's it's all an injury right protection of property is very important here in the state and i would have been i think i've been somewhat justified in saying i didn't know you know if they come in and i didn't know what was going on um but really i uh, had heard like if you wanted to be justified then your back has to be against the wall because they're coming at you you were cornered you had no other way um to get out of your spot so if your back is against the wall then you're you're justified in having to use lethal force if necessary um but that's that's the only case of that so you know breaking and entering people say you got castle law and you do in kentucky but that's not necessarily saying that your life is in danger but that you know your stuff is in danger but they could have a gun and you wouldn't know about it um so it just makes me think about that type of shit because I could have arrested them motherfuckers and then called the police and then had them come up there, there as long as I didn't beat them up or there was no like brutality. So I could have like if I don't have handcuffs, but if I was able to hold somebody down, I can make a citizen's arrest and then call the magistrate, the justice of the peace, or um, a police officer, and then and then they would take it from there. So uh, you know the police officer on the scene comes there and then they basically says, well just call it. Don't do shit. Just call us. Well, I just called you and you didn't do shit, so fuck you. I can't, you know, that's as a man, as a person in the community, I'm being fucking terrorized and they're like, it's fucking bullshit. You can't fucking live like this. There was a black police officer who was like, well, you know, maybe you should leave, right? So that's fucking great. You know, back in, it's 2012 and here, or 2014, and you're not even allowed to, um, stay in a neighborhood of people that don't look like you, which is some bullshit. So, um, in terms of being justified, I knew that the person had done it. I could have, you know, uh, tied them up in some ways and held them down. Well, then that, that takes physical strength, and then that takes the know-how and the ability to do it. And also, you know, they could have they could have weapons, so I'd have to, you know, uh, be cautious of something like that. So, the vigilante justice in Kentucky is alive and well. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a very good thing, actually, because the cops cannot be everywhere. They typically aren't. They're really shitty, right? They don't catch the fucking criminals, but they'll fuck with you if you can be fucked with. And so they go after fucking weak people, people that are pushovers, people that are poor, that don't have legal um, status, and, and allow all the fucking criminals to go free and do as the fuck as they please. And and um, and that's unfortunate. It's, they're not really protecting and serving. They're there to file, fill out the paperwork for the insurance, but they don't want to put their ass on the line when they're taking our tax dollars. They're supposed to be employed by us. 
So there was also Spalding University stole like sixty thousand dollars away from me. I think I could have made an arrest then and there because that's sixty thousand dollars. That's clearly a felony. That's I guess that I would have been justified not well in some type of force because it was a felony. So I had a right to make a citizen's arrest because it was a felony. Anything over five hundred dollars stolen in Kentucky is a felony. And they stole like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars. So they're felons, and they, you know, I could uh, uh, hold a felon down and say, "Hey, they're the one that did it." And hopefully, there's enough evidence, and you gotta, you know, fucking prove your fucking case. If you're a peace officer, you just gotta say your word. Oh, I saw this shit happen. Well, you know, I saw this shit happen. Motherfuckers coming back and fucking terrorizing the fuck out of me and shit. But since I'm a citizen, I gotta prove to you that it fucking happened. Well, I saw the moon, goddamn eyes. I'm sorry, I don't have like little fucking recorders in my fucking eyes um, to show you and capture that fucking moment. I'm just a Pull a fucking camera out. I mean, if you pull a camera out, how are they going to say whether or not you know they think that's a gun or not? Um, and you know, to to confront them in the same sense, you know, there is some sort of I don't want to say correlation, but the idea that I don't know. There's a the guy who's driving by my place. I pulled out the camera and I put it on his ass, and he was like, "You put a camera out on me?" It's like, yeah. So what? Who gives a fuck, motherfucker? You got a fucking piece on you, and you're sitting there driving by my fucking house. And he, well, you gonna put a camera on me? Yeah, so, but if, you know, people go into banks and Walmart and Kroger and all these other fucking places and even Spalding University and they got cameras all over the place, that's acceptable. So if you got 24-hour surveillance video, you don't just pop up and then try to like, you know, I guess when you pop up, people think that a reaction is going to be provoked. But sometimes it's just you. you. Your awareness of yourself and the situation you're in is, you know, I've seen a guy just goes up to people and just film them while they're like eating and they'll just get all fucking pissed off like, Get out of here! What are you doing? Get out of here! <laughs> and just uh, act all fucking crazy. But friend of the press, you're allowed to fucking record anybody in public, so get the fuck over it. You don't want that, hap that to happen. Well, um, you know, uh, go after the fucking Walmart people and all these other fucking people that have surveillance cameras. You don't fuck with those people. I saw this one lady come out thinking she's big and badass. So I, I did not give you my permission to videotape me. Well, I'm in the public sidewalk. From a public perspective, I'm allowed to fucking record you. And then he said something about the security cameras in there. And then she was like, uh, uh, uh. No, there's not, uh, uh, uh. You're being an asshole because he's out in the street and you think you could be an asshole to whoever the fuck you want to be an asshole to. But when it comes to the people that's actually recording 24 fucking hours, all the goddamn time. Either you have no fucking power, or you know there's people and you got access to that fucking video. So you either have the same power with a you know person who just pops up with a video camera. They just record whatever the fucking ten minutes of the fucking thing happens. Whereas the person with surveillance is recording 24 fucking hours, all the goddamn time, you know, nonstop. And so that's way worse. That's way worse. The, the courthouses and the they're such contra they're such fucking hypocrites. Um, but uh, there's a lot of things I wish there's uh, you know you can get those fucking uh, cameras that's like on your glasses and so they can record that you can get like a lapel fucking um, a camera on your lapel and um, and I think that technology I think it's good I think it's a good thing if you're a police officer who does good job then you want all the fucking actions and the things that go on you know uh, to be scrutinized here I made this arrest here's how it went down there was not police brutality because once you know I had got the person arrested that's where it had stopped and um, and so yeah that's um, vigilante laws you're allowed to fucking hog tie some motherfucker up and hold them against their will if you see them doing a misdemeanor or a felon a felony if they commit a felony and the way you know about those charges is how long they can if they can go to jail for it then it's a misdemeanor it's a fucking felony you know if you can go to jail for the crime then you could be arrested by a citizen for that crime there was um police officers that was at my mother's place of business and she says i want a citizen's arrest them because they're scaring all of me my fucking business they keep on getting like 50 fucking people for seatbelt violations um but they're right there the fucking business so they're scaring all the customers Customers, nobody wants to go in. Fucking police and shit. What are they doing there? And um, she was so pissed off about them just harassing all the customers. She wanted to make some sort of citizen's arrest. And she would she would have been justified in doing it if she could have thought of the charge of what he was doing. He's harassing people. You know, there's lots of uh, disorderly conduct. Um, menacing. It's fucking menacing. Just sitting there and waiting, waiting for motherfuckers. And um, and have the power of the state because of a fucking seatbelt violation. Bah, fam, goo. Give me a fucking break. 
Um, admissibility of evidence in prior acts of domestic violence and abuse. So for child abusers and uh, wife beaters and elder beaters and anybody, and man beaters too, anybody who beats anybody. Um, the use of physical force by defendant upon another person is justifiable when the defendant believes that such force is necessary to protect himself against the use or imminent use of unlawful physical force by the other person. The use of deadly physical force by defendant upon another person is justifiable under subsection 1 only when the defendant believes that such force is necessary to protect himself against death, serious physical injury, kidnapping, sexual intercourse, compelled by force or threat, felony, involving the use of force, and those circumstances permitted pursuant to KRS 503.055. Any evidence presented by the defendant to establish existence of a prior act or acts of domestic violence and abuse as defined in KRS 403.720 by the person against whom the defendant is charged with employing physical force shall be admissible under this section. The person who does... Uh, does not have a duty to retreat prior to the use of deadly physical force. So, improper use of physical force and self-protection. If you're being arrested, you can't defend yourself. If you were hurting somebody, you can't defend yourself. If you're the initial aggressor, it's not self-defense. So, it's the first, the first motherfucker that fucking hits the, the aggressor. So, whoever the aggressor is. If I'm like... I used to feel like actions are actions and words are words. So if I go up your face, you son of a bitch, you piece of shit, no good, fucking low life piece of shit. I felt like that was legal because freedom of speech says that that is legal. But I also feel like that's sort of provoking too. So if there's a threat, like if I'm if um, if I'm ready to pull a gun at you, you could shoot me because the, there's a threat. You know, if you pull a gun, then uh, the threat is imminent for you. So then you can defend yourself because the threat is very much there. If I'm cussing at you, there's no threat. There's no you know what what is the remedy for someone just cussing at you and creating your life, making your life miserable? You can cuss back, and that's sort of equal. But really, I think you know maybe say fuck you, but you got to get on. Then it's harassment after that.